Hey, this is OXDF, and today I'm looking at Cursed Secret Party from Hack the Boo, a recent uh, beginner-focused CTF, although this is the Day 5 web challenge, so it starts to get a little bit trickier, um, but still um, a really interesting challenge. So um, like all the web challenges, I'm given a Docker instance I can spin up with my own personal version of the website, as well as uh, download with the source. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to start by opening up uh, Firefox and Burp here. Um, I've got Firefox configured to route through Burp. Um, I've got a video I'll link to about how I set that up with Foxy Proxy and patterns. Um, but I've also got added a pattern since that video so that um, when I put an IP address and a port in like this, that it routes through automatically. Um, so the site itself asks for like a Halloween name and we can put in like, um, some Jeb, some stuff, and we'll put like a at aol.com. Not even right, but we'll go. We'll go with it. Um, I'll be a monster, and I'll take treats, and I will submit. Uh, I have to put a real email. That's ao.com, and it says your request will be reviewed by our team. Exclamation point. Um, anytime you're doing a CTF and you see something that says like we're going to review it, so and so is going to review it, the admin's going to review it, you want to think cross-site scripting. Um, because cross-site scripting is where you get script to run in the context of another user's browser, and that's the kind of thing it requires. This is a good hint they want me to review that, so we'll keep that in our mind. Um, let's go check out what's going on in Burp um, in the HTTP history. So we see um, the GET request here for the main page, um, as well as you know this is a post when I post my data. Here's the here's the uh, body of that post in JSON and the response coming back here that must be displayed. Um, I will note that in all the requests, I see this content, sec content security policy header. Um, and that's an interesting. So content security policy is a way of the site defining what kinds of resources the browser is allowed to load in the context of that site. And so it can say only load scripts from here, only load images from here. And what that allows you to do, you know, if we think about cross-site scripting is where I put something on the site that then gets loaded in another user's browser and their browser does things like maybe calls back to my site and gets evil JavaScript. Well, if the content security policy doesn't include my site, it's not going to be able to do that. Um, so we can break this down a little bit. There's a thing called um, the CSP evaluator. Grab that. And we can come here and put in, copy this, give it the URL. Go and check CSP, and it will show us this policy. So we see that the, the script sources can only come from self and from cdn.jsdeliver.net. Uh, style elements can only be loaded from self and from fonts.googleapis.com. Images, only from self. Fonts, only from self and from Google again. And frames, self only. So, so I couldn't try to slip an iframe in that referenced my site because the content security policy is going to block that. Um, and fonts.google APIs and fonts.gstatic, those are like well-known Google things. I'm not, I'm less familiar with this GS deliver thing. So we're going to want to check that out and uh, see what that is. Um, and if we scroll up here, it's a free CDN for open source. And this is a pretty cool concept, actually. You can use things like, you know, GitHub here, and it will pull JavaScript files off of GitHub, you know, just by giving it the GitHub, the username, the repo, and the file. Um, so that's interesting. Um, it's kind of cool. It's also a hole in the content security policy because anyone can put something on GitHub. We can, and we will. Um, so at this point, we probably know enough to think we're probably going to do a cross-site scripting to hope someone from the team looks at it and maybe we get a cookie or something. Um, but we got the source, so we might as well, before we get too far down our strategy, go look at that. Um, the directory here comes, you know, unzips to this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and open up in VS Code. And so we can start with the Docker file. Um, scroll up to the top here. Um, it's installing a bunch of packages, including, we'll note, it's, in, it's adding the Chrome um, repository and installing Chrome. So that's, again, when we're thinking about cross-site scripting, the, they're installing Chrome on the server to potentially be doing that you know, simulated visiting. Um, they are putting a flag.txt there. They're running with supervisory D, um, all kind of standard stuff, OK? Um, Let's go into the challenge directory. Um, this is going to be the JavaScript that's running. I'm immediately drawn to this bot to see what it's doing. Um, and we can see that it is using Puppeteer, which is like an automation framework. Um, it's reading the flag out of flag.txt. 
and it's also using a JWT helper. Um, it's setting up some Chrome options, and then it's got this visit thing, which is going to launch a browser uh, incognito. It's going to create a JWT, including the flag. So if we can get this JWT, we, we're going to get the flag. And it's going to set the cookie for the site to include the value of token here, which is the, the JWT. Um, then it's going to visit it's the local host slash admin. Now we hadn't seen a slash admin, but there presumably is one. We'll look in the routes in a minute. Um, and then it's going to, once that finishes, it's going to visit slash admin slash delete all. And then it's going to close the browser and it's going to do that every five seconds. So, um, let's check out the, uh, the index.js a little bit. We can come up here and see, oops. Um, it's going to create the database. It's going to, um, Here's where it sets the content security policy, as we already observed. Um, now it's going to use nunchucks for the um, views and templating. So it's handling that. It sets the routes here. Um, and then it does some error handling and other stuff. Um, let's come up here and check the routes themselves. There's an index, index.js there. Um, so there's four routes in this file. There's the, the, the main, the web route, which is just going to return index.html. Not too interesting. We've seen that. Um, there's a post to API slash submit. We've seen that request. Um, it's going to grab all the data. If it all exists, it's going to db.party request add the, the stuff, and then it's going to send back the your request we viewed. If it fails for some reason, it'll send something went wrong. Um, and then there's two paths down here that we've not seen except for in the bot. So slash admin, first it's going to require that the user role is admin. Otherwise, it's going to send non-authorized. And then it's going to get the, go to the database and get all the party requests and then use that to render admin.html. Um, and we'll come back to this in a second. Then admin delete all is going to, again, make sure you're admin. And then it's going to remove all the requests. And it's going to basically clear the database. So what happens when we render admin.html with request.data? Well, data in this case is the results of getting all the party requests. And so let's go look at the view admin.html and see how that works out. So it's going to pass in requests, and that's what, so it's gonna loop over all the data passed in. And for each request, it's gonna create one of these card objects. And then, you know, so these, when you see these squiggly and then a percent sign, that is like a control flow in the templating. So this is like a for loop. When you see double squiggly brackets like this, that means fill in this with actual data. So in this case, it's gonna put you know, request that whatever the request.email for this iteration of the for loop, it's going to put the email there. It's going to put the costume type here. Um, it's going to put the Halloween name here. Um, it's important to note this pipe into safe. Now, you're supposed to do that only when you know the data coming in here is safe. It could not be modified by a user, for example, which is not the case here. Um, and what it's going to do is most of the time, all these other ones without safe, when there's HTML elements or anything like that, it's going to escape those things. But safe says, no, if, it, if there's HTML, render it. Um, so this is going to be our end. We're going to want to put our script tag into the Halloween name here. Um, I think we have everything we need now to figure out what we want to do. Um, we're going to send a cross-site scripting payload into the Halloween name that is a script tag with a source on JS Deliver. We're going to host a payload there that's going to exfil a cookie to us. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a GitHub repo um, that will do this. So um, I'm not going to go into the details of creating a GitHub account. Um, I will use my one I got here. I don't I don't typically log into things like my GitHub account in my VM because that's uh, not I consider it not a safe space. But we're going to come once you assume you can create a GitHub account. We'll create a new repo and we'll call this um, we'll call the repo like uh, party XSS. Um, we don't need to worry about anything else here. We can create the repo. And so now right here is the link for create a new file. Um, if we were doing a real project, we'd want to like sync this with a local repository, start building files there. But since we literally just want to put one file in here, so we'll call this like oxdf.js. And we can start by putting in um, uh, just a test. Let's just start real simple. Test. Uh, please subscribe. Okay. And so if we come down here and we'll say um, this is a create 
create that. It's perfect. It's all we need. All we need. We create this file. Now we can move this out of the way. And we can come here to JS, uh, JS deliver. Not good at saying that. Let's grab this top link right here. Uh, I missed the H. We can put that in. So H. There we go. And now the user is my username. So OXDF223. The repo is party x s. Did I make that all caps? I did. I don't know if caps matter or not, but we'll go for it. And then the file is oxdf.js. If I run that, we can see there's test, please subscribe. So it managed to get this file. And this file would be trusted by the CSP on, on um, whatever this challenge is called. Um, let's go here then. And well, actually, before I pull this back on, the other thing we're going to check out here is a thing. Um, we're going to use a tool. We could set up, we need some way to get this connection to come back to us. Now I sit in my personal network here behind a NAT router. Um, so I, I could poke holes in that. Um, I could go set, use a service like ngrok to go, um, you know, a, to get a URL it can talk to. Um, but I'm actually going to use another tool called webhooks.site. Webhook.site, excuse me. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me a unique URL right here, which I can copy, and any requests to that are going to get displayed over here. So we can actually test it. We can just paste this right in, and we can put like um, data equals this is cool. Two L's. It's all cool because they're doing it. And so now my request shows up right here, and my date, the query string right here has got the data. Um, I get all the information about the request, etc. Potentially any cookies or anything. So um, that's pretty neat. So what we'll do is we'll come here and we'll grab what's that? Um, let's see, we can delete this one. We can copy this to the clipboard. So what our new payload is going to look like? I can drag this back in and make it look big. We are going to click on this file and we're going to edit it. And it's no longer going to say test, please subscribe. Now it's going to say. Um, we'll do, we want this to be actual JavaScript, right? So we'll use the fetch item to fetch this with a cookie equals, and then close that plus document, document dot cookie. And like that. Now, this is going to be some JavaScript that's going to make a get request to the URL webhook.site my thingy with cookie equals and then document dot cookie. So we will come down here and we'll say, Weaponize XSS payload, commit. And so now that's what this is. Move this, move this window back out. Um, we can come here and check this and make sure it refreshed. It did not. So this is a, this is a content delivery network. It's not expecting things to update that frequently. Um, so it probably is caching for some period of time. So what we might want to do here is um, come back here to party XSS, um, click add file, create new file. We'll call this like um, e.js. And let's see, we'll do that same thing again, fetch um, plus document.cookie like that. And we need to go get the URL. Um, I don't still have it copied, do I? I do. Beautiful. Um, cookie equals. Okay, so now we've created our new file, cookie.js, and we'll just commit this. All right, now get that out of the way. Come over here, call this cookie.js, and there we go. We got our we got our JavaScript. So now if we grab, let's see, this is exactly what we want our source to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, also I'll actually do it here. Um, script source equals like this, and then close script, just like that. Well, that's going to be our entry that we put into the Halloween party. So we're going to come up here under Halloween name, paste that in. The rest of this stuff we can do the same, and we will submit. And now it says it's going to be reviewed by the team. So within the next five seconds, I would expect our webhook to get a hit. And we do. We get a hit. 
coming in from 161, which is the, uh, oh, not even from that, from a different IP address. Interesting. Um, but we have a session cookie here. Um, and if we grab this, we can take this, this is a JWT or Java web token. So the easiest way to evaluate that is go to jwt.io and paste that in here. Now we, the signature won't verify once I click out of here. Weird, it is it does verifying, but it doesn't matter. Regardless, you can see the data section of it here is admin, admin, and a flag. So we solved it. Um, really neat challenge. Um, if you stuck around this long, um, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Oh.